Hello everyone this is part 32 of what if Naruto was adopted by Kakashi, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. It had been a very long time since soon it had to push herself, a long time since she had last been in a fight where she couldn't just blow through the opposition. She had forgotten what it was like, the danger, the excitement, the fear of facing something that was on par with you. Given her age she was pleased to see that her body still could match up in a fight like the one that had started not long ago. Sure she felt certain aches and pains she didn't when she had been younger and in her prime. Her body was only slightly slower but only so that most likely was the only one that could tell. She was still quick enough to dodge attacks, to see them coming and to give back with enough force of her fists to show Orokimaru that she hadn't lost her touch. But Orokimaru didn't show any signs of having slowed down over the years, a bit annoying for her but workable. The young man however was a different manner, her old teammate did most of the attacks but then he would come in whenever he saw any kind of weakness. Just like at this moment the young man came at her from behind, she twisted her upper body as she tried to backhand the boy's head off. Kabuto however was ready as he ducked and ran by her, one of his hands started to glow blue with chakra as he touched her leg and arm as he passed by her with a grin on his face. Suna didn't notice anything wrong at first, until she tried to move her left leg but her right leg moved instead. She tripped confused what happened, her medical mind going through possible things like a concussion but dismissed it as she hadn't received any head injury. Orokimaru kicked her in the chest sending her flying and landing on her back. She tried to get up but it was like her body wasn't acting like it normally would. She only managed to get into S sitting position as she tried to work it out. Her mind quickly came to the conclusion that her nervous system had been switched up. She could feel all her limbs but thinking about moving her left arm seemed to make her right one move. Her neural impulses from her brain to her muscles had been switched around and the only way to do that was through medical ninjutsu. Looking at the white-haired teen she understood a lot more about him, that kind of advanced move wasn't something a novice could do. For someone that young to be able to use this kind of technique in a battle condition wasn't easy. Looks like she figured it out, Kabuto pushed up his glasses slightly as she caught Sunid glaring right at him. From how she was studying him he had guessed that she now knew what he had done, it was to be expected of the great Sunid whose medical ninjutsu was unrivaled. Even his skills he knew paled in comparison but he wasn't some first year student either. He had spent years learning from his, father, who had been a medical ninja. Well to be honest he never considered that man his, father, his real parents had died that day at the Battle of Kikyo Pass when Kanoa had killed a group of enemy ninja. His parents had been a part of that, many thought he had been too young to remember but he still remembered that day. He remembered being under the dead body of his real father and the hatred for the Leaf Village. How appropriate that they were going to destroy one of the great ninjas of Kanoa but also one of the greatest medical minds in the world as well. Kabuto also wanted to show his master that his faith in him was not misplaced. He ran forward to attack while she was weakened. It came as a great surprise to him when she suddenly in the last moment used her right hand and managed to land a hit on him. The power of her fist was like nothing else as he was quite literally blown away from her. He landed onto the soft earth with a loud thud as he slowly tried to get up. His whole body hurt from that blow, every nerve was screaming out as he tried to calm his mind and allow his body to heal from the damage. Using his medical knowledge he pours his chakra into his nervous system to help fix the problem but it would still take time to fully heal. How were you able to still move? He forced out as he got up on shaky legs. Soon it stood without a problem grinning. I'll admit that was a good idea on anyone else that would have worked. But who do you think came up with that technique? I know how it works and how to use my chakra to send my neural impulses back to the way they are. I know every inch of how my body works and how the human body works in general. Techniques like that might catch me by surprise for a moment but not for long. Now let me show you another technique that I'm more famous for. She raised her leg high up nearly straight up as she brought it down into the ground as the force of the impact split the ground forcing the two men across from her to jump out of the way. Orokimaru laughed with a large grin on his face. Good there's that old fire of yours. I'll show you more than just my fire, she told him. 
Orokimaru was about to reply when he heard something coming from his sharp ears. He could sense a presence coming and he wasn't even attempting to hide. He noticed that Kabuto and Sunid suddenly noticed something as well. It wasn't long until a large toad leapt among them slamming down into the ground with a huge amount of force. Thanks for the ride, Jiraiya told the large yellow toad as he and everyone got off. He dispelled the frog as soon as everyone was safe. This wasn't a combat type anyway he had called this toad as it was for fast travel given he was one of the greatest jumpers among the toad summons. What are you lot doing here? Sunid asked them slightly annoyed that Jiraiya would bring Genin of all things into this. Didn't he understand how dangerous this fight could get? Well I heard there was an old team reunion and I guess my invite got lost, Jiraiya counted back. Plus I couldn't leave the kids unsupervised. I was doing fine on my own, Sunid told him. Well I have to admit I wasn't expecting you old friend, Orokimaru chuckled not at all put off by his arrival. And you brought your own students, seems fitting as I brought one of my own. Hello again Naruto-kun, Kabuto grinned at the Genin team. You jerk, my dad told me that you were nothing more than a traitor. Naruto shouted out at him as his friends glared at the glasses wearing team. They had actually liked him at first when they had met him but learning the truth of his alliances all three of them were giving looks that could kill. Traitor. Kabuto acting hurt by that. I'm no traitor, you have to be loyal first to be a traitor and I was never loyal to the village that destroyed my family. Yes it was so nice to meet someone whose hatred for the village matched my own, Orokimaru added in. Face it, old friend, you've lost, Jiraiya said to Orokimaru. We got you outnumbered. Orokimaru chuckled, I suppose you are correct about that one at least for the moment. You see I had a surprise in store just in case things went so wrong that I needed help or if she actually did choose to come with me. Well maybe I'll show you something special I had planned now. He bit his thumbs to draw blood and quickly went through a series of hand seals. Jiraiya was able to follow them to know that they were some kind of summoning but something seemed off about it. He knew that Orokimaru could summon snakes but this wasn't that kind of summons, it seemed slightly different. As his hands hit the ground the black inked seals appeared on the ground as suddenly two large wooden coffins appeared. Now Jiraiya had an idea of what was going on and he wished he had figured it out sooner to stop him. He had no idea who was in those caskets but whoever they were they couldn't be good. The lids opened and fell and Jiraiya's eyes widened at the sight. Sunid who was behind him, he heard her struggle to hold a horrible cry back in her throat at the sight. This was the worst possible thing to happen for her and Jiraiya once again cursed their old friend. Standing in the two coffins was a young man and a young boy, they were Dan, Sunid's old lover and her little brother Nawaki. No, Sunid could only just whisper it out as the two bodies opened their eyes and just looking at them they seemed just like how she remembered them but she knew this was wrong. They were dead and should be a piece but as the eyes opened it was like a dagger had been plunged into her heart. Both resurrected males walked out of their caskets. Bastard, Jiraiya muttered knowing this wasn't the kind of thing that Sunid should see. Well is that any way to talk to me after I made this great family reunion? Orokimaru asked him. Well no matter, I had planned to use them anyway since I did take the time when I was back home to gather the material for this now you two why don't you say hello to everyone? I'm sorry about this, Dan spoke for the first time. But we have to do what he says even if we don't want to. With that he and Nawaki charged forward. The Genins decided to take this one as the adults were unsure what to do for a split second. Sunid wasn't sure she could bring herself to fight with the two, for she's in she was rooted in place seeing her long dead uncle again as Jiraiya couldn't afford to take his eyes off Orokimaru. When the Genin jumped in he went after Orokimaru as Shizun quickly went after Kabuto. Naruto, Sakura and Sasuke attacked the two resurrected dead with their weapons. Although the dead ninja fought back Nawaki being a genin didn't have as much skill as Dan did. So it was Sasuke that managed to slice his sword into Nawaki who looked surprised. This boy wasn't much older than he was but he had moved so fast. As soon as Sasuke took his sword out of the body it began to heal. Naruto and Sakura combined their attacks on Dan although the older man was a lot more skilled than Nawaki. He had been a fully trained ninja for years and had seen a war before being killed in said war. He had seen more battles and fights than all of Team 7 combined at the moment. Naruto soon found himself kicked to the ground as Sakura tried her ton for only to miss and had been counter-attacked. Okay this isn't going well, Sakura said as she put her ton for into a guard position. 
Man this sucks, Naruto muttered as he looked to see that Sasuke was still fighting the one that was their own age. He could see that Jiraiya and Sunid had started a battle with Orochimaru, from what he could see it was a battle like he hadn't seen and he kind of wished he would watch. The two Sanan were going up against the third one and they seemed that they were going all out. But he had to quickly focus back into his own fight as Dan rushed towards him. Naruto jumped back to avoid the attacks as the man pulled out a kunai to attack. Naruto used the family sword to deflect the blows but the guy was fast and good. You're not bad for someone your age, Dan told him. Sorry for doing this but I have no choice. That's not exactly a comfort. Naruto shouted out trying to keep ahead of the man. You know what, screw this. He made a bunch of shadow clones and attacked the man head on from all sides. He figured this would at least slow the man down. Although the wounds seemed to heal almost as fast as Naruto's clones could inflict them. Plus the man was slowly getting rid of the clones one by one. I might need a new plan soon, Naruto muttered trying to think of how to deal with someone that was already dead and couldn't be hurt or killed. Shizune attacked Kabuto as she pulled back her sleeve as the device she kept hidden there full of automated firing blades. She pulled on the firing line as they launched at the traitor. He pulled out a kunai as he managed to knock all the blades out of the air. Despite his age his skills she found were above what she expected. Kabuto moved in close to start attacking with his kunai as she managed to move and dodge. This was something she was waiting for as she inhaled and felt the chakra into her lungs go into the special poison she kept in them. She exhaled as a large amount of poison gas was released from her mouth. She tried to aim it into the boy's face but it seemed that he was ready for something like that dodging away from the gas. The problem with her jutsu was that when she sent the gas out she couldn't see because the gas would sometimes obscure her field of vision. Kabuto had used that to his advantage to sneak out of her line of sight. Kabuto saw that Sunid and Jiraiya was giving Orokimaru trouble, he couldn't do anything about Jiraiya but Sunid was another matter. He had read all kinds of reports on certain people and he knew what Sunid suffered from. He ran into the battle as he made a cut on his palm, he flexed his hand to make sure that he had enough blood cupped in it before he ran at Sunid. She saw him coming and was prepared for an attack but when he threw the blood at her it splattered over her. When Sunid realized what was on her she just froze, she couldn't move as her mind went to a halt. The horror kept coming back to her even as Kabuto kicked her across the field. Sunid. Jiraiya called out seeing the blood on her knowing that she was frozen up. You're looking in the wrong direction, Orokimaru told him as he attacked Jiraiya. Lady Sunid. Shizun had been following Kabuto but he had had too much of a lead. She rushed as fast as she could to get to her master's side. Kabuto took advantage of this as he pulled out a small smoke bomb and threw it in her direction. She immediately closed her eyes, mouth and held her breath knowing full well the kinds of trouble smoke could have on the human body. That is until she felt a burning sensation on her skin and came out of the smoke crying out in shock and in pain as her body slumped to the ground. That smoke had some kind of toxin in it, her medical mind quickly raced as she reached for her medical supplies she kept on her body. She had several antitoxins but she just hoped that whatever she had would work. But she could look up in horror as Kabuto started to attack Sunid over and over again. She forced her hand to work as her body was slowly going numb, not a good sign for her as she felt her fingertips touch her antitoxin supplies. Granny. Naruto saw that Kabuto was going for a killing blow by this point. He left Sakura and Sasuke to deal with their enemies leaving a good supply of clones with them to help them out since he was closest to her. Naruto moved as fast as possible to reach her in time, to help out he threw out a shuriken from his pouch on his belt, he was hoping the weapon would give him more time. Thankfully it did as he took the time to deflect it as he ran at the man thrusting his sword out at him. He really thought that he managed to get in a good shot, until Kabuto sidestepped it just enough for the blade to just pass his body within a hair's breadth of his body. He saw Kabuto's smile before he slammed the ring part of the kunai into his wrist hitting the nerves his hands instantly opened dropping the weapon as Kabuto then used his free hand to punch him in the face. Well I have to say I'm a bit disappointed in such an attack. Aren't you the one that keeps talking about being Hokage? Kabuto asked him with an evil smirk on his face. Then again maybe it's better you just die here, such a stupid dream. I nearly laughed when I heard that you proclaimed that you would be Hokage, you. You have to realize that such a foolish dream has taken the lives of so many, what makes you think you can do it? 
you should learn that dreams are for children and in the real world you can never attain such things. Kabuto readied his blade as the boy slowly got up. You should just lay there and die, it would make everything so much easier on you. Shut up. Naruto yelled out. I will be Hokage. I don't care what you think or anyone else, I plan on getting strong enough to become Hokage and protect the village. I love the village and I plan on defending it with my life, for my family, for my friends and for everyone that means something to me I will do anything to protect them all. To be Hokage means to protect everything that's important for you. Soon it heard all of this as echoes of the past came back. I love this village so I'm going to be Hokage. That had been her little brother when he first proclaimed his dream. I want to protect everyone. That had been Dan when she had decided on giving him her necklace. For a split second she saw both of them in Naruto but there was something more in him, there was this fire in him that they hadn't had when they proclaimed the dream. She hadn't seen this kind of fire in, it was so long when was it? Then it hit her, she hadn't seen this since her grandfather would talk about the village, when her granduncle would talk about being Hokage, to even when the third had talked to her about what it meant to be a ninja of the hidden leaf. They all had that special fire in them, the will of fire to be exact. Naruto formed a seal and made a clone as he ran at him as she knew that rushing head on like that would be suicide. She cried out for him to stop but then she stopped as she saw something strange. The clone was doing something with the real Naruto's open palm and suddenly energy started to form. She couldn't believe her eyes as slowly the raising gun formed. That's impossible, he's only a gen and he shouldn't be able to pull something like that off. But he was as Kabuto was taken by surprise he was about to move away when he felt something grab his leg. He looked down in surprise as another shadow clone had come out of the ground. One of Naruto's clones had gone with the original as a secret plan of attack. He had gone through the ground to come up and surprise Kabuto. The other clone when he had finished helping the original, this clone grabbed Kabuto's other arm. This is my will to be Hokage. Naruto shouted out as he rammed it into the boy's chest. Raisingen. Kabuto had underestimated the boy as he felt the jutsu trying to tear his inside apart, he pumped as much chakra as he could to heal the injuries as they happened but the force of the impact was forcing him back. He put just enough chakra into his free hand and managed to use a chakra scalpel. He felt it cut into his insides knowing he was going for vital areas. He yelled out at the jutsu took him a few yards away as he fell into his back the force catching the two clones dispelling them. He landed on his back unable to move from the pain in his body. His shirt was ripped and his chest looked horrible as he gasped for air. He was had never felt such pain but thanks to certain techniques was kept alive but he was unable to move. He did manage to laugh out painfully as he slowly managed to turn his head to look at the boy's body hit the ground. So much for your will to be Hokage. Soon it saw the boy fall and something inside of her broke, she couldn't let it happen again. She forgot the blood, she forgot the horrors as she saw this single boy she had barely known show her something that she had forgotten about. Shown her something that her grandfather and everyone that followed him had embodied, she would not let this flame go out. She quickly went to his side turning him over and placing her hands on his chest as she began a quick check to see what was wrong with her medical chakra. She could feel the damage and it was amazing the boy was still alive. No dot not again, I won't let someone die on my watch again, not like this. She told herself as she worked as hard as she could to repair the damage she could feel inside of the boy. She was not going to fail again and as she saw the blood on her arms she didn't feel the fear anymore. Whatever chains had held her down were suddenly gone from her mind as she did what she had dedicated her life to doing. Saving fellow ninja of the leaf, protecting them and making sure they could go back to the village that they all loved. Jiraiya took a moment to look over the battlefield, the genins were having trouble with the two dead ninja, Naruto was down as soon as it was actually healing him, Shizun was getting back up apparently from something that had happened to her and Orokimaru was still fresh in this fight. He had to turn this around but looking where everyone was positioned he was hoping to get rid of a few pieces in one go. He started with the hand seals yelling at Sakura and Sasuke to jump out of the way. He hoped the kids didn't get stuck in this jutsu. Jiraiya placed his hands on the ground as suddenly a large part of the ground turned into swampland. It was a jutsu that was great for capturing people. The two dead enemies were luckily caught as Naruto's clone stayed to hold the two as they also were taken by the jutsu. Orokimaru however had seen it coming and jumped freely out of the way. Jiraiya knew it was a gamble but he had to try at least this freed up the kids. 
Orokimaru scowled slightly as the fight was not going the way he was hoping. Kabuto had been actually taken out and Jiraiya had managed to get his two resurrected ninja were now stuck in swamp water of all things. He could see them struggle but from how fast they were sinking they weren't getting out anytime soon. Now that Sunid had somehow gotten up even while now covered in blood things weren't going well for him. Now he saw both of his old teammates facing him ready to go, in a one-on-one -on -one he was sure he could take either of them but two-on-one he wasn't that confident. The battle was over he could admit that but maybe it wouldn't be a total loss. Sunid was working on the Jinchuriki boy, Kabuto must have did something to him and whatever it was Orokimaru figured that Kabuto had done something serious. If the boy did died that would hinder Akatsuki's plans for him and the others like him. Well it wasn't a total loss then if that happened, now he just needed to take Kabuto and leave and with that boy down he doubted Jiraiya would leave. Plus there was the fact that his two resurrected pawns would still be left behind. I have to admit this day was looking up at first, Orokimaru told Jiraiya. I had hoped to harm the leaf in another way but it looks like fortune isn't with me today. Planning on slithering off then. Jiraiya didn't want to let him leave if he did there was no telling whenever they would get a chance like this again. They could take Orokimaru out right here and right now, he was too dangerous an enemy to let go. I've had my fun and there is always another day, he grinned as he raised his arms as two large purple snakes came out from the sleeves. They opened their mouths as Jiraiya was expecting some kind of venom attack or for them to bite him. He didn't expect a large amount of purple smoke to come out of both snakes. Jiraiya was about to rush through the smoke in a blind charge, yes it was insane to attack a target he couldn't find but he figured that Orokimaru was already moving to run off. Although he halted just in time when his eyes noticed the grass was starting to turn brown where the smoke hit. His mind screamed out poison gas as he quickly jumped back just before hitting the smoke. He wished he knew wind jutsu but it just wasn't his element, he had no talent for that type. He looked to see that the smoke was covering a large area but he ran to the right anyway to get around it. Although he knew he might be too late he had to try but by the time he cleared the poison smoke as it started to dissipate he saw that Orokimaru was gone. When the smoke was completely gone he noticed that while everyone was focused on Naruto the boy he had hit with the raising gun was gone as well. Jiraiya mentally cursed, he would have to have a plan for that jutsu in their next conflict and he planned on not letting Orokimaru run amok forever. He hurried back to Naruto who looked a little worse for wear as the others were gathered around him. He didn't ask how he was doing she would just get annoyed with him and tell him to shut up so she could concentrate anyway. The others were gathered around although he did notice that Shizun and Sasuke had noticed Kabuto's disappearance as well but said nothing figuring that there wasn't much to say anyway. Sunid was giving everything she had she wouldn't see another life die not on her watch. Thankfully it looked like she was getting help from the boy's prisoner. His body was barely holding together, if it had been anyone else then Kabuto's attack would have killed them. Naruto's unique healing traits allowed for the boy to survive but it was still close too close. She stopped her treatment when she was confident that she was done. For a moment there was nothing until Naruto groaned as his eyes flickered open. Welcome back Gaki, Jiraiya told him honestly relieved to see the boy was okay. Although he knew that if anyone would help him it was Sunid, but he had still been worried. After all, all of his apprentices were dead now and a part of him worried that Naruto might join that list. My chest hurts, Naruto groaned out. Not surprising given what I had to fix in there, soon it felt a sense of accomplishment, this was the first person she had saved in years and she was surprised how good it felt. But as she stood up she couldn't ignore it anymore as she walked over to the swamp that was holding two people that she had loved most in life. They were up to their torso in the swamp but were still struggling. The Naruto clones had run out of Chaka and had dispelled nearly after the Jutsu had been cast. Despite their circumstances Dan looked up at her and smiled, it was nice to see you again my love. Dan. I'm sorry. I tried, tears filled her eyes looking at the man she had loved and had died in front of her. It's okay I know you did your best, Dan looked at them all now. I can see that the next generation will make a great impact on the world. His eyes landed on Naruto. You truly have the will of fire in you from what I saw. Hey, of course I plan on being Hokage one day you know, Naruto proclaimed even while being held up by his teammates. Hokage ha, huh? Dan smiled at him. Perhaps you might be able to do it where I failed. Couldn't we just keep you around? Sunid knew it was wrong but she had them both back again. 
She didn't want to lose them again. But she knew that this wasn't going to last. She just had to ask. I'm sorry, sis. Her little brother looked at her sadly. But if we weren't stuck in this, we would still be attacking. I don't want to hurt any of you, but if you let us go, we'll just keep on attacking until you're dead. Soon it felt her heart in her throat as she closed her eyes and nodded. It was nice seeing you again, sis, he told her smiling. Also sorry for dying, I just wanted to make you proud of me. I love you sis and I hope you're taking care of grandpa's village for me. Soon it swallowed as she nodded her head. I'll miss you. I know but it looks like you're not alone, Nawaki told her seeing everyone around her. Dan looked to Jiraiya as the man looked so much older but he knew that time was short. All this time his body was working on trying to get out and they couldn't let this go on for too long. He knew that the man cared for Sunid and he needed to know someone was watching over her. He could still remember the last time he had seen her, in the rain crying over his body. Jiraiya, look after her for me. He told the old ninja. You got it. Dan looked to Sunid, look after yourself and the village my love, she's in you've grown into a fine woman, sorry I couldn't have been there to watch it. Thank you uncle, Shizun wiped the tears in her eyes. Goodbye, Suna told him as she closed her eyes. She couldn't watch this, couldn't watch them disappear again. Jiraiya completed a few hand seals as the swamp started to get deeper pulling the two into its depths. Two figured who have been brought back to life had finally said the goodbyes that they couldn't have in life. They sunk down into the dark depths deep into the earth where they would be forever sealed. Sunid rose up on her legs as she looked out over the area that would forever hold two of the most precious people in her heart. Her heart was filled with rage towards Orokimaru, sadness over losing him again, but she found a bit of peace there as well. She never got to say goodbye to them before and now she had this chance. So what now? Jiraiya asked her. Sunid was quiet as she thought about everything before answering. I think I've had enough fun, it's time for me to go home. Jiraiya despite himself grinned, so that means you'll take up the old man's job then. Besides, the brat won our bet in the end. Well I can't leave it to you now could I? She told him as she looked at everyone else. I guess we'll have to patch you kids up, it will be good training for you Sakura if you really want to learn medical jutsu since Shizun keeps talking about it. Jiraiya knew that she was hurting and just pushing the pain away for later but there was a light in her eyes that he hadn't seen in years. For a moment it was like the old Sunid he knew was finally back. Feeling a few aches in his body he was glad this mission was over and they could go home. Taking one last look at the swamp he gave a small nod to his head towards those poor souls. He didn't want to do something like this but there was no choice they didn't know how to undo the jutsu, maybe one day he would find a way. At any rate it was time to go home. Kanoa main gate. Finally we're back. Naruto yelled out excited to reach the gates. It had taken them some time but they had finally reached home and it was a good thing because they were all glad to see their home again. Sunid looked at the village, she could see the damage still present in a few areas but overall it wasn't as bad as she could have feared. Plus walking through the gates gave her a sense of peace she hadn't felt in a long time. For the first time she actually felt like she was coming home and she liked how it felt. For a moment it was like she had never left and she asked herself how she could have forgotten this feeling. Jiraiya looked at her with the corner of his eye and only grinned slightly to himself it was good that he could see that she was enjoying being home again and it was great having her home again too. This was where she belonged not wandering the world trying to forget her past. Here was where she could do the most good and where the village needed her most. The genin looked just as excited as well from the looks of them. Man I can't wait to show my dad my new technique. Naruto happily as they marched towards the check-in station where all ninja had to check in and out so the village would have records on who left and arrived on what time and date. Oh yeah plus Hanata-chan and everyone else, man they are so going to be jealous. You're not the only one that learned something, Sasuke told him not wanting to be left out. The trip back had given him enough time to get a handle on the ability of putting lightning chakra into the metal rods. He had been moving on up to his sword although he might have to get a new one. His blade wasn't made to have chakra bumped through it. Certain weapons were specialty made for this purpose, Jiraiya told him that once he mastered it, it wouldn't matter what the blade was made of as long as it had metal. He would train a bit more to see if he could master it to the point that he wouldn't have to get a whole new weapon set for it. How about you Sakura-chan? Naruto asked his friend. Granny seems to be working you hard. 
that earned him a bob on the head from Sunid with a small tick of anger on her forehead. She really wished at times he would stop calling her that. Naruto glared up at the women but her own glare sent back simply told him not to push his luck. The woman could hit him clear across the village if she really wanted to. It's actually pretty great, Sakura jumped in quickly while mentally wondering why she always had to play peacekeeper at times like this. I've been learning a lot. She's a quick study, Sunid said proudly at the girl, Sakura had an uncanny natural ability to remember what she learned. Sunid was starting to wonder if the girl had some kind of photographic memory or something but it was more than that. Sakura could also grasp the concepts not just remember them from what Sunid could tell. That was much more important to understand the material because then when something unexpected happened you could adapt. I think in a month she might be ready for some more practical exercise. Sunid told them all and then looked at Sakura. That is if you're willing to take extra training under myself and Shizun when we have the time. Sakura's eyes lit up, to train under them would be amazing there was so much she could learn. Of course. They got to the check-in when the two Chunins on duty saw who the group was it was a shock, two of the legendary ninjas, one of them Sunid who had returned home for the first time in so many years. It was one of those things that actually made this boring posting worthwhile at times. But as soon as they saw Naruto Hataki they were quickly reminded of another duty that they had. It was one of the things that no one wanted to do when they got this posting. Naruto Hataki, one of the men said to the boy. Yeah, something wrong. Naruto wondered why the two Chunin looks are uncomfortable. Sunid and Jiraiya however picked up on something was wrong. They had enough life experience to notice the subtle signs in the two Chunins. You should check in on the hospital, one of the spoke up. What? Why? Now Naruto was getting a bad feeling that something was wrong. Kakashi Hataki was placed there weeks ago, he's been in a coma ever since, the other one finished hating this part of the job especially to say something like this to a kid. Naruto took only a second to process what was said before he rushed off, soon to be followed by everyone else. Kanoa Hospital. It had been an hour since they had gotten to the hospital and the entire team was currently waiting in the hall as soon as was working on Kakashi. Naruto had rushed over here as soon as possible and had demanded to be taken to his father's room. When they had finally gotten to the room and saw the still form of Kakashi, Sunid had taken charge right then and there. She demanded to see the doctor on duty, to see everything on Kakashi's condition. It wasn't long until a nurse had quickly dragged a doctor in, when Sunid was in her medic mode you couldn't help but do what the woman demanded. Soon everyone else was kicked out of the room as she went to look on his condition and if possible to heal him. That was where everyone was at this moment, waiting in a hallway for some kind of word. There was a strange silence among the Genin team but what really was getting to Sakura and Sasuke was just how quiet Naruto was. It was very strange to see the boy so still and quiet and it was starting to worry them. Sasuke glanced at the boy now and then but Naruto's face was more of a mask now, even though he wore a mask anyway, than he could ever remember. He did notice that Naruto kept clenching his fists now and then. Jiraiya had gone to the Hokage's room to report in and set things up to make sure that everything would be set up in advance for Suna to take over. Sasuke was looking at Naruto and he had no idea what or if he should say something to him, Naruto was a rival that he had ever since the first day they met. Naruto was the only person his own age that actually pushed Sasuke to get better and it was a rivalry that he had come to enjoy. Ever defeat spurred him to improve, every victory felt great but despite all that the boy had become his friend and Sasuke knew what it was like to lose family. It was a pain that never really went away, it dulled with time but the wound and scars of that always remained. He didn't want Naruto to know what it was like to lose family, especially since Kakashi was the only family that Naruto had left. Ever since learning about his past, that Naruto had lost his parents without ever knowing them, Sasuke felt a bit bad that he at least had memories of his parents. Kakashi had become the only father that Naruto had known. The young dark-haired boy also didn't want to lose their sensei, it was more than that Kakashi was the only one that could teach him about the Sharingan, or what else he could learn from the man. The man had become a bit more than a teacher, all those stories of Obito had given him a new look at his clan. He had been the first adult that Sasuke had really started to look up to and while on Team 7 he felt better about his life. He still wanted to kill his brother but lately he felt that maybe there might be more to it. For Naruto he was in own little world as for the first time he really felt fear in a long time. 
He had gone through a lot but not once did he ever think that he might lose his dad. Kakashi had always been there for him, in all the times he needed a dad, Kakashi had been that dad. Helping with homework, making him do homework actually, making sure he ate more than ramen but treating him to ramen when Naruto did something good. All those memories rushed through his mind and he just couldn't see his life without his dad. Kid. Naruto looked to his left to see Anko, Hanata with Kurenai coming quickly over to the group. When word got out that Naruto and the others were back and that they had Sunid with them at the hospital Anko had ran straight here. It was pure luck that she ran into Kurenai and Hanata and quickly told them what she heard. She only had slowed down because Hanata would want to come with them and Kurenai came as well. Anko had been the one that had spoken to Naruto and the look in his eyes told her that the kid was holding but he was worried, well she knew that all too well. When she heard that Sunid herself was at the hospital for the first time she had real hope. Hanata moved to his side a range of emotions running through her. She was glad that he was back but she was also worried for him. She sat down next to him and when she looked into his blue eyes they weren't as bright as they normally would be. She could see the turmoil he was in and her heart ached from it. Naruto had always been the stronger one the one that always was there for her and made her happy. He was always the one that would be cheerful and hopeful but this was the first time she could remember when she couldn't see any of that in his eyes. Hanata could still remember the day her mother had died, it had been the worst day of her life and yet Naruto had been there for her, through all the heartache and pain he had always been by her side as her best friend. But now they were more than friends and she wanted to be there for him, to share his pain and help him through what was to come. No matter what she didn't want Naruto to be alone so she sat down next to him and without a word gently placed her hand into one of his. Naruto looked into her pale eyes and felt her soft hand in his own it felt so delicate and soft in his hand as he gently took her warm hand in his own. It felt a lot better to have her here as he waited to see what would happen. Her gentle nature seemed to have a calming presence on him but the worry was still there. Anko looked at the two and couldn't help but feel a small smile tug at her lips. Despite everything, this little warm moment showed her that relationships had many parts to it and being there for the other was part of it. Seeing the two young ninjas made her hope that neither of them would go through what she had been going through since Kakashi had been put into the hospital. How long has she been in there? Anko asked the others. Over an hour now, Sakura answered as every single minute seemed to drag for eternity. It felt like eight hours by this point for her as she was deeply worried for their sensei. How did this happen? Sasuke asked as they hadn't had a chance to ask anyone that question. Anko felt a slow burning anger inside of her remembering how it happened and how she hadn't been strong enough to help. Kakashi had taken on everything to protect them all and now he was the one in a hospital. So she started at the beginning about how they had run into two strangers in the village and how it turned out to be Itachi and a partner of his. Sasuke took extreme notice when his brother's name had been said as a very long rage filled his eyes. It was an old pain and anger that had slowly burned for years and now it was slowly starting to burn hotter. Anko finished things off by how she wasn't sure what happened, but Kakashi had ended up taking some kind of assault that landed him in a coma and he had been in there ever since. We still don't know what happened, Kurenai finished as she had been there. Kakashi told us to keep our eyes closed the entire time it happened. A Sharingan technique, Sasuke spoke up for the first time. It's the only thing I can think of. Do you know what kind? Kurenai didn't know much about Sharingan techniques, not many did outside of the Uchiha clan. Yeah I have a pretty good idea, Sasuke's jaw clenched remembering the last time he had seen his brother on that bloody day. He had seen those red and black eyes that were unlike any Sharingan he had ever seen before. The next thing he knew he was spending three days in hell, living the deaths of his family and clan over and over again in a never-ending torment. Sasuke remembered waking up in the hospital over a month later. It looked like he wasn't going to say anything else to everyone so they didn't push they could see the anger written all over the boy's face. We've been visiting every day, Hanata told Naruto if only to get rid of the silence that had started to build up. We, Naruto asked speaking since he had left the room for the first time. W well myself, my team, Kurenai sensei, Asuma sensei and Anko sensei was here a lot too. Hanata counted off mentally of those she could remember off the top of her head. Anko turned away slightly if only so no one would see the slight blush on her cheeks, she hated being looked at as, soft, by others and now she had everyone looking at her at once. 
Normally she liked attention just on her terms. What? Anko challenged anyone to say anything to her at the moment. At least the kids had the good graces to know when to avoid her look. Although Anko did look at the closed door to Kakashi's room wondering how things were going, her heart felt like it was hammering in her chest as any moment soon it could come out of there with either good or bad news. It was 15 long silent minutes until the door finally opened with Sunid and Shizun walking out as the blonde woman looked slightly tired but in a good mood. You got 15 minutes to talk to him but not more, he needs to recover and, she couldn't finish before Naruto rushed by her into the room making the woman smile. It felt good to help others again and to make sure a family stayed together filled her with a great sense of accomplishment. Kakashi groaned feeling like his entire body was stiff and his head felt like someone dropped a mountain on it. He couldn't remember how he had gotten into the hospital exactly but as he thought about it, it was slowly coming back to him. He started to remember Itachi and then those three days in hell, he remembered Anko being there too and a slight panic hit him as he tried looking to see if she was in the room. He wasn't sure if that had been a trick or if she had also been pulled into that world, it felt like a nightmare that he had dreamt but also he felt like it had been so real. His memories blurred from that moment as time while in that world had been stretched and twisted to the point that he couldn't tell how much time had passed. What had seemed like an hour turned out to only be a minute, it sure felt more like months than days. The first thing Kakashi saw when waking up had been a face he hadn't seen since he was a lot younger, soon it herself seemed to be back. She gave him a quick check and he complied as best he could but he felt totally drained. Most likely from not eating solid food since he had been in a coma for starters and he didn't even want to think what his body was like having not moved at all in all this time. Soon after soon it had left a small blonde, black and orange blur ran into the room and landed onto his chest. Kakashi nearly had the wind knocked out of him as Naruto collided into his chest. Dad. Hey there. Sorry you had to come back and see me resting like this, Kakashi joked wrapping an arm around Naruto. It felt good knowing that Naruto was back home and safe, he remembered how Itachi had been after him, he wasn't sure about the full reasons for it but it wouldn't have been good for Naruto. Naruto pulled himself out smiling that his dad was okay, I was worried dad. I know, sorry son, Kakashi placed his hand on the boy's head. So anything interesting happen on your mission? He knew that changing the subject would help and Naruto's eyes lit up as well. Oh yeah I learned this really cool new technique. Naruto happily said as he started to go into the whole story. He was interrupted halfway through when Anko pulled him off, she had waited for the father and son reunion but she couldn't wait anymore. Hey what the hell? Naruto protested. Soon it said only 15 minutes brat, Anko told him. You can tell him the rest tomorrow let some of us have a moment too. Oh okay. Naruto scratched the back of his head realizing that Anko would want to talk too. Okay I'll be right over tomorrow dad. I'm not going anywhere, Kakashi grinned as Naruto and the others left. Soon it was only Anko and Kakashi there in the room alone. Kakashi looked her over, she seemed a little ragged but well. It looked like Itachi might have just used an image of her after all, that made him feel better. He could take torture but the torture of those precious to him was a lot harder and it was extremely hard to have seen her gone through it. He could still hear her screaming in pain and although it had been an illusion it still rang in his ears when thinking on it. Kakashi also started to realize something else, Anko meant a lot to him. He had never felt like this about anyone, she was in his thoughts daily and a face he always looked forward to seeing. Yes he found her beautiful but it was more than that, she had an energy about her that made life fun. She walked over to him smiling and he couldn't help but smile in return. Are you okay? Kakashi asked and saw some confusion on her face. He wanted to make sure that she hadn't suffered because he hadn't been strong enough to protect her. With the fight after I went down. Oh that, yeah guy showed up just after, well whatever Itachi did to you. Anko could see him visibly relax and wondered what he was getting at. Well whatever it was she had someone more important to say to him while she had the time. You know there's something I need to tell you. Oh yeah. Kakashi looked at her intrigued as she leaned in closer. He had to admit that he was glad that it seemed she had never experienced the hell he had gone through and the thought of her lips was a welcome change. Too bad that he was so occupied with her lips that he didn't notice her fist connecting into his stomach, he forgot how hard she could punch before that moment. He coughed out as he tried to breath, the next thing he knew she was thrown over him and he wasn't sure what was going on. Anko. He asked carefully. You idiot. 
She yelled at him. Do you have any idea how hard it was seeing you like this and not know if you would ever get better? She pulled back and for the first time in Kakashi's memory he could see tears in her eyes. Anko never cried, at least he had never seen her cry, not once. Yet here she was although it wasn't the water works you would expect, maybe a couple and that was it but that was a couple more than he could ever remember. Yudikai was so worried, she balled her fists and wiping her eyes she wouldn't cry anymore she had cried enough as it was and she didn't like it. Sorry, Kakashi couldn't think of much else to say he was still surprised that Anko had actually shed tears and for him no less. Don't do that to me ever again you got that. Anko gave him a steeled look that she meant it. I know that our lives are dangerous and I know that but I just need to hear you say it, that you'll never do this to me again. It's stupid I know but. He managed to reach up and cup her face, I know and I'm sorry to worry you. Tell you what, as long as I have you to return to I'll keep fighting and never give up seeing you again. Although the sentiment was his, he actually took that from one of his books. It was actually one of his favorite lines and he doubted that Anko would know it. Besides he wasn't sure what he could say to her that would make her feel better but this whole thing did remind him of one of his favorite scenes. Despite what many thought he was a bit of a closet romantic, which was one of the reasons he read those books, again, one of the reasons. He was actually surprised to see her blush slightly it was kind of cute seeing her a little more feminine at times like this. She tried to hide it and he wanted to say how cute she looked in that moment but he got hit once already by her. Idiot, she whispered out but his words did make her feel better. She heard a knock on the door as soon as voice telling her that Anko's time was nearly over. She learned and gently pulled down his mask to give him a gentle but long kiss. She was just so relieved that he was awakened that he would be okay. All this time she had been an emotional wreck but it did put things into perspective for her and she saw things about herself and her feelings for Kakashi went a lot deeper than she thought. Slowly she pulled away putting the mask back up. I love you, she whispered to him and quickly got up and went to the door before he could see how red saying those little words made her face. She had forced herself to admit the truth and now she had finally said the words. She didn't care if he said them back, well okay that was a lie, she did care a bit but at the moment she wanted to give him time to process that. Kakashi blinked not sure he heard her correctly, wait Anko what did you just say, Anko. Anko. He called after her but she closed the door behind her. So there he was tired, his body streaming for rest and decent food but all he could think about was what Anko had just said to him. He just stayed awake for hours after that thinking on it and trying to pin down how he felt about it by the time he thought through it he also came up with a plan on how to respond to Anko. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.